before we move on to anything else just want to say r.i.p to bob saget um this news kind of broke all over social media and stuff the last couple of days and yeah man it's been a bit of a tough one that because i'm a big fan of his and it's funny because i wasn't really a big fan of his and i didn't really know anything about full house or fuller house at all um i mostly was a fan of his stand-up and obviously him being on podcast because you know i'm a bit of a fan of that whole la podcast scene and he seemed to be one of the good eggs right he seemed to be like a tom papa type guy like a jim caffigan type dude a refreshing sort of and yeah a, a, a refreshing kind of um he's a he, he was a refreshing beverage after listening to you know, people like Burt Kreischer, you know, these adult babies, these men who have like refused to grow up and drink themselves blind, silly every day and talk about the most obscene stuff at their grown age. It's always nice to have a comedian on who's generally funny and doesn't play the class clown just as a funny bloke. And you got a lot of that from Bob Saga. He seemed really, really, he seemed like the, you know, people when they make it and they're eternally grateful that they get given this chance to basically live out their dreams and every day they want to somehow in their own little way give back a little light to people like it's a really particular trait not everyone has it some people have a trait which is similar to brendan shaw but it's like no i got here through my hard work and i deserve to be here that's why people pay me you know that kind of not entitlement but it's a little, sort of like um it's this weird let me say delusion but everyone's got a different person it's not, it's not to say it's good or bad but I just appreciate Bob Saget's personality and how he went about things because he was so refreshing from everybody else that I'd seen on that LA podcast scene who kind of seemed really wrapped up in themselves, um, kind of treated their fans as an afterthought or the audience as an afterthought, thought they kind of walked on water. And of course, some of them had to get brought down brought back down to earth through some really you know troubling accusations. But I thought Bob Saget was just a decent human, again, don't know the guy personally but just from watching him on podcasts and again i think the recent one i watched him might have been joe rogan that was a recent jre and he was really really good on there um it was again refreshing too because you know the covid talk was um down to a bare minimum just talking the shit about industry stuff life you know funny stories and whatnot and um yeah he just seemed like a good dude i can't have anything more better to say about that it just seemed like a thoroughly thoroughly good dude then to pass away at 65 that's no good age man especially nowadays 65 is incredibly 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 young especially given his standing in life and the fact that he was you know I, i'd assume with the means to be able to um live a somewhat healthy stress-free quote-unquote life dying at 65 is just such a tragedy it really really is he has so much more to give i think he shared a couple of posts on the instagram on twitter talking about how he was so happy and falling back in love with stand-up comedy again after being on tour performing for however long it was and again i saw that in real time i remember seeing that in real time and double tapping thinking oh that's pretty cool and i didn't think anything anything of it since then and randomly on timeline you start seeing people posting pictures of somebody that you like and the first thing you think okay either they, something got announced that's amazing that they're going to do or usually they pass away. It's always it's, it's always macabre that, and it's really really upsetting, especially the person that you actually know their their content. You feel like you kind of know their personality a little bit. You've grown to kind of like them over a period of time. Cause that's what happens, right? <clears throat> Listen to somebody in the podcast. You, you you kind of develop this weird parasocial relationship, but it kind of progresses over time. You might start off not liking them, then you might start liking them for a certain thing that they talk about. Maybe you might start liking a certain segment, but you learn to kind of. Um, um, include them in your daily or weekly rotations or podcasts that you listen to and it becomes a real link because sometimes when they don't upload on time you start you know fiending like just recently the other day tim dylan didn't upload the interview with joe rogan that he was meant to do on time and i was scratching like a little crackhead waiting for it to drop and i'm sure other fans were the same so to see this happening and to see his picture being shared everywhere bob saga you just knew just like oh man please let it be an announcement of some show he's doing or some reboot and then unfortunately no it was him um being dead at 65 years old so again r.i.p bob saga man absolute legend um let's quickly read off the article from tmz it says the following bob saga has died at 65 years old tmz has learned multiple sources connected with the iconic comedian and actor most famous for his starring role in danny starring danny turner's Danny Tanner's Full House tells us he passed away Sunday at the Ritz Carlton in Orlando. The chef department and the fire department responded to the hotel at 4 p.m. ET after hotel security had found Bob in his room. We're told he was pronounced dead in the scene, but the circumstances of his death are still unclear. 
Um, being, Bob's been touring the country lately, hitting a number of destinations throughout the state of Florida, including Orlando, which he started in September and was supposed to take him through to May. Jesus. On Saturday night, he was in Jacksonville doing a show at the Ponte Verde Concert Hall, where he actually shouted out the crowd early Sunday morning. And this is the, yeah, this is the post I saw like live when he actually posted it. He says, um, love tonight's show at the PEV concert hall at Jacksonville. Appreciative audience. Thanks again to Real Tim Wilkins. Sorry, Real Tim Wilkins for opening. I had no idea I did two hour set tonight. I'm happily addicted again to the shit. I can only imagine what people who are actually at the show must feel like. People that are working, doing people that had plans to hang out, go to dinner or whatnot. Just waking up and just you know finding God Almighty. Um, the tragic thing is, I'm I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, um, Bob Saget was pretty close with Norm Macdonald. Um, again, I'm I'm just reading into nothing. I don't know if that has, has anything to do with it. Whether he was still really upset and kind of distraught about Norm's untimely passing, a passing that no one actually knew about because he kind of kept his illness secret and private to himself. But damn it, man. R.P. Bob Saget. Saget wrote, duh, 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 duh. Saget played the patriarch in the hit ABC sitcom for almost 10 years, landing the lead star role in 1987, um, finishing out his first iteration in 1995. Opposite stars John Stamos, Dave Collier, of course, not to mention his TV daughters, Candice Cameron, Jodie Sweetin as Mary Kate, and Olsen, who swapped the duties of portraying Michelle. While his turn as a quintessential family man um, is what a lot of people remember him before. Truth is, Saga is a pretty raunchy guy, especially in his stand-up comedy. Um, Bob Saga's comedy contributions were put on full display on his mem mem memorable comedy roast, um, sorry, Comedy Central roast, where a ton of his lifetime, long-time friends and buddies taught him a new one, Killingly and Love. Yeah, that was one of the best ones, actually. Good, good, that was good that they mentioned that. Um, he proved to be a good sport, taking shots from the likes of Gilbert Gottfried, Norm MacDonald, Greg Girardo, legends in it. Damn man, two of them already gone. John Lovitz, Jeff Ross, and Brian Poston. Um, he even had some jokes of his own to fire off, making perhaps one of the most memorable roasts in Comedy Central's vote, speaking to Saga's influence on the craft. Um, in addition to his stand up and full house fame, Saga will also be remembered as a fan, as a fan favor on America's Funniest Home Videos, of which he served as host from 1987 to 1997. <clears throat> running con currently on this time and tone of fh speaking of mr tanner he reprised his role as netflix reboot on the franchise fuller house which ran for four years ended in 2020 yo bob saga must have been paid bro he was the host of american's funniest home videos from 1989 to 1997 that was back when tv was paying bucks as well right and everybody was watching it because there wasn't we didn't have they didn't have smartphones back then right or like phones you could watch stuff on so people's attention or saturday nights were basically spent in front of the tv so if you're hosting something around that era people know who you are so you're legit famous not like famous people you know nowadays where everyone's got a high amount of instagram followers but you no idea who they are and uh, because it's, it's the fame sounds more segmented you're kind of famous in your own little niche whereas back then bob saga was like a legit household name like when they say household name he is legit household name like he run his name definitely rung off which definitely explains you know why he was so jovial all the time and always smiling because he's so paid up man um yeah r.i.p to the legend bob's other notable acting credits included a recurring role in entourage in which he played a zany version of himself and narrated his voice oh yeah true he's in entourage i forgot about that another sitcom he starred in um called raisin dad one of the penguins in the face of penguins the lead in surviving serbia and a standout cameo in half baked as a recovering crackhead among and many many other appearances on film lately he's been getting back to the roots of the podcast series called bob Saga's here for you really good as well podcast series i think he started it if i'm not mistaken during covid or during the lockdowns um it's always, always it's always over zoom but because he's such a nice dude it sort of works um they kind of bounce off each other there's a recent one he did with bill bird that was really funny but most of them are really good. Even if you don't know who the guests are, he's, he has a good way of kind of interviewing and being a good conversationalist. Um, so definitely recommend you check that out to kind of, you know, honor his legacy, or honor his memory, sorry. Um, and he even featured on one of the celebrity guests of The Masked Singer not too long ago. The last time he we got we got out what sorry the last time we got him out was in a late 2019 when he was hanging out with his fans and perhaps outside of Craig's in West Hollywood while also taking photos and signing autographs. We wish Ross happy Jeff Ross, he wished Jeff Ross a happy birthday on the on the 31st and seemed to be in really good spirits. Bobby survived by his wife Kelly Rizzo and three children. R.I.P. Man.
this is legitimately one of the most touching and actual nice you know um RIP post I've seen from TSZ, so you could tell he was a legitimately nice dude, or the person writing it, I was actually a fan. So that's nice to see they didn't, you know, do him a disservice. Um, and then they said here, the the update so far has been the Orange County Sheriff's Office tells us we have no information on the cause of death and detectives have found no signs of foul play or drug use in this case. The medical examiner's officer will, will make a final call. Another bog button, another update here says Bob's longtime friend and co-star John Stamos just tweeted the following. I am broken. I'm gutted. I'm in complete utter shock. I will never ever have another friend like him. I love you so much, Bobby. And yeah, man, I don't think it's even bothering to, I don't, you know, anyone bothering to entertain what the cause of death is, like, you know, mind your business, don't be a cunt, um, just, you know, remember his um, memory, and yeah, man, remember all the good times, and obviously rewatch content, rewatch stand-up specials, rewatch, of course, series he was in, podcasts and whatnot, because yeah, definitely one of the good ones, and it always happens that way, isn't it? We always lose the flipping good ones first, and the absolute douchebags who, you know, probably do more damage than good still hang around life is just cruel like that but again r.i.p to um bob saget um force and feelings go out to his family and close friends during this really tough time especially just after christmas after the new year you know new lease of life trying to get your plans that you want to put in place and stuff and then boom i have no way this happened so yeah r.i.p bob saget man absolute absolute legend